Hi everyone, welcome to my Sherline studio. I'm Sybil Muschik. Behind the camera is Joshua Blanc. Today we're continuing on with marbling. Now marbling has a long history coming of course all the way from China and Japan and then settling in Turkey and they developed a system called Ebru and it was very secretive at the time. Uh, they started becoming popular in Europe in the 1800s and people used them as um, you know bookends and uh, specialty papers for maybe cards or whatever and the patterns were well kept secrets and also what they worked with but today we know a little bit more and on the internet on Google you will find um, you know on YouTube many um, Hebrew uh, artists who are working with the medium and will show you a, you know a more formal way of working now we're going to just uh, go you know our way as usual <laughs> And, uh, but I did want to show you some of the tools and some of the patterns as far as I'm able to make them. There's a long history of um, master's training that you go through if you're, uh, you know, getting into Hebrew and uh, it's not so easy to follow some of these things. And they use much bigger vats, they're like, you know, monstrous things. And their colors are more water-based they don't need to uh, use uh, alum to prepare the papers. And if you saw my last video, uh, we haven't needed that either because my hammer mill paper seems to take it very well. However, let's get busy and we'll start. Uh, and this time I'm going to start with black. Now I found that black uh, will drop to the bottom when we have a lot of other paint in the vat as well. So we're going to start with it and it gives us a nice contrast. So I'm just going to drop a whole bunch of different and I think the camera might be able to pick up all the little dots that we're doing. You do have to be mindful about the little you know, bubbles that we get. unless that's particularly what you're going for. You never know what sometimes, uh, you know, opportunities that come up. But we have a bubble and we will just get rid of it. There you go. Now I'm going to add some other color in here. And you can see that this teal color travels really well and it's pushing the black out of the way. And we'll add a little bit of this fuchsia color just for interest. Now if we added black in uh, after we do all of this, it might just go right to the bottom. So of course we will try it, <laughs> just to make sure, you know, don't want to be saying things that don't necessarily work, so um, I'll be shaking intermittently just in case. Yes, you can see that the black just doesn't travel as well anymore like the beginning. So there's several things that make uh, your paint um, just drop to the bottom. And this is one of them where you have an awful lot of marbles on the surface. Uh, I should talk again about the things you have to add to the paint. Um, I don't use marbles, I use something called Zinser Latex Extender. You can get it uh, just a hardware store, uh, some of the big hardware stores that's available here or send for it. Marbleese is pretty expensive as an art supply, of course that's typical. <laughs> so we'll let that just sort of mingle a bit. Um, and I think we have enough colors to be going in with. Um, let us now use our little skewer or stylus. And we'll start just manipulating the colors on the size. 
the reason uh, this particular size works so well and why I think I don't have to use alum is uh, carrageenan moss seems to be really fabulous for allowing the paint to get into the, the paper. And we're getting quite a nice pattern so and less is more so let's print this paper is a little bit more heavy duty than most copy papers I think it's 100 GSM uh, hammer mill and it doesn't seem to curl as much as some of the papers so we just Make sure you can see too where the paint hasn't saturated the paper. It'll be little white spots on the opposite side. So I'm just pushing that down. And I can see the pattern has been picked up pretty good. You don't have to leave it very long because it's almost instant that it goes into the paper. So you lift it up with your little stylus, grab the other end. If you leave it too long, uh, the paper might get too saturated and then it will make the paper fragile. And just let it drip off and then let's show this. So beautiful. And look at how intense the colors are. And you can crop off where I had my fingers. So that's quite gorgeous. Okay. And we'll put that in a safe place. Now you can see uh, when we put the black down the second time that it sank to the bottom. Uh, that won't interfere with anything on the surface. But eventually it will make uh, your sizing um, gray and then um, there's still quite a lot of color. And then you'll have to change, put some more sizing in. And what I do is I just dump it in a bucket, let it sit for a day or so, and all the paint will just sink to the bottom. Uh, carrageenan moss is non-toxic. And then just, um, just like, um, you know, working with regular acrylics, um, when you dump your acrylics, And then it, everything settles to the bottom and you can just pour off the water and clean the sides of your vat. And we'll do this a few times. You can always add more. Uh, you don't have to dump it all out. You, it will clean up a bit more if you add more sizing because as you do a number of these um, you know you're going to get the level down so so I'm shaking my black again I had a little bit of violet in there it just doesn't uh, add too much of anything um, I'm going to do a series of dots Again, we're starting with black. And then I'm just going to drop a few little guys in there. In the last video I showed you how you could put it in a cup and then uh, use a brush and hit the side of your fingers to get smaller dots. So let's put some blue in there. Again, we'll shake it up. Now something to be mindful of is temperature. We're sitting at about, what are we at, Josh? About 21? 21, yeah. 
which is maybe a little bit on the warm side, the paint tends to uh, change character. It may uh, maybe dissolve into another color, which is not good. You want everything to be discreet. And let's see, that's the blue. Let's put some of the green in there. Just a few little drops. That's looking good. Okay. Now we're going to start with tools. These are Ebro tools. These come in your kit. Now it's probably a good idea to have a vat that is the same size, uh, like a square size, because you can see this is a problem. I can do this, I guess. And then just clean off the little tips. And you get kind of a feathery um, pattern. And if you, you know, manipulate it a little bit, it's a little bit more interesting. And let's run it through once more. It doesn't have to touch the bottom. If you go too far, the pattern just becomes indistinguishable. You'll learn, you know, how much is too much. Okay, let's print that. So it takes time. Enjoy the process. It is very relaxing. And you'll be transported. It's quite lovely. <laughs> you'll be thinking of all those Eastern things, flying carpets and Aladdin and the lamp and all those things. <laughs> you can certainly do it with your family, well supervised, of course. We're talking about um, inflammable um, additives and so forth, which you must be careful of. Okay. Grab the ends, scrape off the sizing, and we'll have a look at this one. Now, can't you just see that on the inside of a, a book, or even as a cover for the book? That's usually what they use for. Okay, we'll get a paper underneath here, and then. Josh can haul it away. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> They'll dry overnight, maybe even sooner if it's warm in the room. I think you can get away with temperature uh, for, to about 22 degrees, and then after that you have to worry. So those of you in a hotter climate, uh, maybe go to do this in your basements where it's much cooler and just watch your temperatures. Um, I had a friend I did marbling with, <laughs> uh, and this was in Wells, uh, which is just outside of Parkerville, the gold rush town that a lot of people know about. And Wells is um, sort of similar. A lot of the artists live there, and uh, there were churches that were made into galleries, uh, and still are actually. So well, we're seeing. Anyway, my friend invited me to teach a class there, and I was so worried about the temperature. So she wanted to put some wood on the stove, and I knew we were going to be cooked out. So, <laughs> and at the end, she was she was a very thin lady, and she was just freezing. I think at the end of the class. So we said, can, and she said to me, you know, can we finally put some wood on the stove? <laughs> I, I think I was being a little extreme. Anyway, it was so much fun, and uh, at that time I was doing marbling with oil, which can also be done, but the paints are a little bit more diffuse and they mix a little bit more. But I made sure by keeping to temperature that we were doing a good job. Anyway, we got to clean this. And you can pretty well tell that you've cleaned it um, because you'll see it on the paper if there's still residual color. 
I have my handy little waste basket there and I just dump it all in. And your Canadian tire flyers are really lovely for this. <laughs> uh, here in Canada, I know a, a lot of you watching are either from the States or the UK or Australia, and um, you probably don't know what Canadian Tire is, but it's a uh, sort of, not a hardware store exactly, but close to it. They sell a lot of stuff anyway. And they send out all sorts of flyers, so I'm sure they'd be thrilled to know that there's many uses for their flyers other than shopping. <laughs> I have a different black here that works just fine. And we'll do this Ebru style. And I just... I <laughs> you should see my tablecloth. Um, I have little dots everywhere. So you just have to be careful at your aiming at the vat and not everywhere else. You'll see in a minute, uh, well there's, there we go. <laughs> it's okay, it's wipeable. <laughs> so that's enough black dots, I think. So I have some yellow, put it on the brush, again Now there's a lot of black there. You can see that the yellow isn't doing much. Mostly sinking. And uh, this was something that we have to consider, right? That some of the paints, uh, if the other colors are too strong and they push them out of the way, that will make them sink. And you remember that uh, how strong that uh, fuchsia color was and how much it traveled uh, to begin with. And look at it now with all that black in there. It's not, but that's what we want is little dots, lots of them. Some of them are sinking, some are staying on the top, which is good. So we just want a gazillion little tiny dots. Okay, this out of the way. <laughs> dots everywhere okay so now we have the small comb now you can start um, just by starting it with your stylus um, just carrying on as usual this is a good idea it just spreads those little dots out a little bit further Just go back and forth, back and forth. And maybe down a couple of times. And hopefully we'll get the pattern we're trying for, but then you don't know what pattern I'm trying for. <laughs> Neither do I. <laughs> okay, uh, here we go. Again, you can wiggle it. And let's use the big one. Okay. Now if you had this the proper size and 
you know, this thing uh, was able to go the other way, that would make quite a difference. But we'll, we can do the best we can here. And we'll see how this prints. What we're trying for is a traditional pattern. I think it's called non pareil, which means not parallel. And I will try it at some point with a square pen so that we can about the size of my combs. You can send for the pens. I tried, but I just went to the local dollar store and, and got um, a cake pen. And I'm sure you can buy a square cake pen about the size you need. So this one's a little more subtle because we had a lot of, um, just a few little drops on the top. So you don't get that intense color but you do get a nice pattern. Okay, you know, the looks like the violet's smeared a little bit. Okay, we'll try that once more and we'll see how that works. Again, clearing. And we might just put some more sizing in here. So I'm showing you the process, uh, you know, you're not just going to have gorgeous things every time. Sometimes you need to work with it a little bit more. You need to control your variables. And I'm just going to pour some more stuff in there. I have it back here. So it's about a two cups that we're adding of sizing. Now I made up the sizing and I was rushing a bit because uh, we had an opportunity to do the video a little earlier than usual. Uh, mostly because it's going to be minus 30 on, on Sunday when we usually do it. So again, clearing. Uh, sometimes there might be lumps in the sizing um, and you'll, by clearing, you will get those out. And by refreshing here, um, we might get a better result. So let's try this again. You can also use just your little stylus and add the drops that way. We just won't put as much black in. And see now our fuchsia is traveling again, which is good. So just some individual drops. Um, we have the green. And we'll dot the surface a bit with it. Yes, that's, I think I just got carried away with the black on the last, on the last one. So as you work along, you'll see, you know, what it is that's required, uh, how to control for some of the problems. And before you know it, you'll be a really magnificent marbler. <laughs> and maybe some of you will go to Turkey and take lessons. That would be awesome. Like I said, there's some really good Hebrew um, marblers, professionals who you show you the formal stuff and they will, I think there's one that does the formal tulip that's so popular. And uh, we'll just make a lighter green here with this yellow. And this one should be far more intense. Not that subtle papers aren't a good thing. Um, sometimes they're very attractive. And of course, they might be good for those of you like 
be who are gel plate printers, um, they might be a good start for, you know, collage. We often need subtle papers for, you know, backgrounds. Oh, this is looking really good. Right, we're ready to do some scraping here. And this one, um, the tines. Little go both ways. Now, let's see how this works. There are specific names for some of these. You know, like bullets and, and uh, feathers. This is sort of a feathery looking situation. Sometimes they look a little creepy because of the edges, <laughs> especially in the black. So if you want to make things like um, dragons and stuff, that's And that's probably as small as you want to take it. Otherwise it breaks up too much. So let's print that and see what we're getting. You can of course cut your sheets in half and uh, then you have sort of bookend kinds of things. And again, just touch the surface here, make sure everything is printing. This is a print because you're putting paper on a surface and picking up paint. So even though the surface is liquid, <laughs> it's a print. <laughs> Okay, grab your corners. Are you ready, Josh? <laughs> okay, scraping. Oh yes, this one's nice. Dripping off. So this is closer to what um, marbling experts do. Um, and they have way more colors. We're just keeping to basic colors this time. But you get the idea, and you can add lots more colors. But more colors are, you know, you might get mud, so keep it simple. Okay. The next one we're going to try is a tree. <laughs> now, we'll see what happens. We'll do the best we can. And uh, I had a successful tree. We'll take a quick break here, prepare everything. I'll have that ready to go. And I want to show you uh, an Ebro style uh, marble piece that I have from a friend of mine who uh, took some lessons, Ebro formal lessons. It's a beautiful piece. And then uh, I'll show you the tree and then we'll see what we can do with that. Okay, we'll be right back. So here is a formal Ebru marbling. Uh, the paper is very thin but sturdy and you can see the difference in colors. Um, well of course they have a full range but often they'll use uh, you know yellows and browns and so forth and you can see the patterning and mostly this one is drops dropped in because you know the routine and then maybe one stylus to uh, indicate the patterns. So this is a precious piece. I should get it framed actually. It is gorgeous. Okay, I'll give it to Josh for safekeeping. So I tried this last night. It was so much fun. Um, this was the first one I did, just in black. 
uh, so black and a little bit of blue and it gave you you can manipulate I think in the first video I showed you how to do a flower um, if we have time we might try another flower but I think we're getting pretty close to the end here <laughs> all right so and here's the last one I did so that's pretty spectacular so we'll try probably this one so it's been a while so better shake again we'll use the fuchsia as a background color and not too much and leave that middle section available for the black or it will sink so a little bit of green And then we'll put some black in. And I'm just going to do dots going up. Not too far. And then sideways. I've put the other colors in so the tree, the black doesn't spread too far. And these, are, these little dots will just be for branches. So far, so good. Now back to our stylus. And we'll start with a, try and make a trunk. So you just pull it up. And see how it narrows at the bottom there? And you can put a few roots and then start bringing out the branches. Now this should be an evergreen tree so we've got lots of wide branches. I'm going to just bring it down from the top. And you can manipulate the sides if you want, or maybe some kind of other shapes. Not too much or it will distort your tree. Maybe have a different tree here. By the way, in Australia and New Zealand right now, the laurel trees are blooming. I call them Christmas trees, and uh, they're beautiful foliage like this fuchsia. That's what it reminds me of. I've only seen them in pictures, of course, but I would... Have you seen them? You must have seen them, Josh. Are you thinking of the Pahutakawas? Yeah. With the red flowers? Yep. Yeah. Anyway, actually, I had a dream about this, and I didn't know they existed, oh, and really? then I looked it up. Huh. Oh, well, we can maybe pull it in in spots here to make it more tree-like. Anyway, Merry Christmas to all our friends down under. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, to all the rest of you. Uh, you may be seeing this in July, but that's okay. Uh, here in the North Country, we often celebrate Christmas in July. <laughs> Nobody wants to travel in this, um, at the temperatures we're going to be getting. And the bears are all sleeping. We had a comment um, about bears, and somebody said, keep them up here. <laughs> yep, we have bears. Mm -hmm. And they were busy this year. Um, we had one going after our gar garbage can. And uh, my dear hubby um, 
applied it with uh, what are those things? Cla um, those straps. Uh, yeah, zap straps. Yeah, <laughs> on, on to our post that we have at the carport. Yeah, and the bear tried and tried. We got lots of teeth marks in the garbage can, but he couldn't get it open. But then, of course, neither could I. <laughs> okay, let's print. So he was on garbage duty for a while. Bears are sleeping now, hopefully. Now this might be a total disaster, but we've given it our best shot here for now. I keep working on working until I get something like this. And sometimes you luck out and sometimes you have to work, you know, quite a long time before you get what you want. But in the meantime, you have marvelous pages anyway. And here's our tree. Look at that. Ooh. <laughs> uh, we're also putting it on Instagram. So I'll turn it around for the Instagram people. Uh, we're Shoreline01 on Instagram. So follow us there if you have a mind to. And of course on Facebook, Shoreline Studio. And here on YouTube, just uh, Shoreline or Painterly03. And I want to wish everyone a very happy holiday. Whatever religious faith you have, it's a solstice time. Uh, we're now getting longer days every day. So the sun's coming back. And hopefully this year will be so much better than the last one. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, take care of yourselves and your families. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. We really appreciate it. Take care and bye for now.